you think we could do something about that intro? Like, we can ease in, ease the keyframes or something like that, instead of ramping. Oh, hi. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, and everything in between. My name is Nick, and this broadcast is brought to you in glorious golden vision. Uh, excuse me while I have a word with the, uh, with the animators up there. What the... Goldman Vision is brought to you by Comic Movie Guru and Nerdfeed.com. Nerdfeed, the largest growing social nerd work in the universe. In the year of... a long f***ing time ago, the Infinity Stones were created when some sort of godlike creature split itself into six pieces, which we now know as the Infinity Stones. We don't know why, we don't know where, we don't know when. They just did. Okay? These stones, each imbued with a different power, are known as the Mind Stone, or the Scepter, the Reality Stone, or the Ether, the Space Stone, or the Tesseract, whatever the hell a Tesseract is, it's the Space Stone is the Tesseract, the Power Stone, or the Orb, they should really come up with a better name than the Orb, the Soul Stone. We don't know what that is, actually. We uh, haven't seen that in the movies yet. The Time Stone. Haven't seen that one either, but I speculate we're going to see it way, way later on in the series. We'll talk about that later. This directly from the Marvel Wiki. The Infinity Gems and their abilities. The Mind Gem which endows the user with near limitless psionic psychic abilities, including empathy, telepathy, and telekinesis. The Reality Gem, which allows the user to alter all of reality, similar to the effects of the Cosmic Cube, but much, much higher. The Space Gem, allows the user to travel through space mostly through teleportation, able to interfere with the motion of other objects. So think about the Hulk, and the Juggernaut. When they pick up momentum, they're unstoppable forces. So you take the Space Jam and you put that in between them and all of a sudden, these unstoppable forces are stopped. The Power Gem, endowing the user increased strength and durability, enhancing virtually any known superhuman ability, including energy manipulation. The Soul Gem, which allows the user to observe, attack, or even steal a being's soul or spirit, also used to revert individuals to their natural state. So, let's say someone gets turned into a zombie, or they just become something that they normally aren't due to some weird magic or something like that. You can use the Soul Stone and turn them right back. Oh yeah. The Time Gem, which allows the user to Seriously, you really need to ask? It's, it allows you to travel through time, dude. Like, it's, ti it's, a tri it's a time stone. You know, you don't, it's not a watch. You know, it's a stone that allows you to travel through time. Sorry, I'm, I'm speaking really condescending, and I, I, I swore I wouldn't do that. I'm sorry, guys. The time gem allows one to stop and slow down or speed up the flow of time. Or accelerate or slow down aging. Even see into the past or future. Notice that the Marvel 616 comic book calls them gems, and the MCU calls them stones. Here's the deal with that. From this point forward, if I say gems rather than stones, I'm referring to the comic book canon, which may or may not change in the MCU, hence probably them calling them stones rather than gems, because they're not actually gems. Also keep in mind that the colors of the gems are different than the colors of the stones. <laughs> you like how I did that? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. So, Infinity Gems equals 616, Infinity Stones equals MCU. Good? Good. Let's move on. A race known as the Celestials eventually gathers said Infinity Stones. These Celestials, at this point in the MCU, are only known as technologically advanced aliens. No, not the green and gray guys that we're familiar with, but big-ass robot monstrosities. Don't ask me, ladies and gents. Just trust Feig. Or Feige. I think it's Feige. I don't know. We don't know anything else about who or what the Celestials are, just yet. We hung out inside the head of one of the Celestials with the Guardians of the Galaxy for a while. Hell, we even got drunk with a raccoon. That was before Drax f***ed it up and called the big bad Ronin. Eh, it's okay, he got his ass kicked. You party crash and... That's right, you get... Party thrashed. Moving on. 
These big bad celestial mamma jammers eventually get a hold of the power stone. They begin deciding which planets have decent pizza and which ones don't. Okay, it wasn't that simple. Sorry, I'm from New York and now I live in New Mexico and I kind of miss pizza. It was more like Judgment Day, put upon the planets they deemed either worthy or unworthy. Those deemed unworthy, with shitty pizza, would be wiped away using the epic power of the aptly titled Power Stone. Eventually, someone unknown decides that this Power Stone must be hidden away on the planet Morag. Enter Andy Dwyer, I mean, Burt Macklin, I mean, shit, Peter Quill, resident space badass who chauffeured us across the galaxy in Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, it's actually kind of funny that they call it Guardians of the Galaxy when they clearly mean universe. Hmm. It's okay, we'll suspend belief. Moving even further on. Odin has the Tesseract, okay? The tesser Tesseract. Odin is Thor's father, the toughest nails ruler of Asgard who kicked the shit out of the Frost Giants thousands of years ago and is more than willing to do it again. The Tesseract isn't the only Infinity Stone to pass through Asgard. While we received a possible canonical glimpse of the Infinity Gauntlet, we've definitely seen other Infinity Stones, as well as treasured artifacts of power. The Eye of Agamotto of Doctor Strange fame, the aforementioned Infinity Gauntlet, or just a couple. The Asgardians were in possession of the Aether, as well as the Mind Stone, albeit for what we assume to be a short time. One could say Asgard is the... Christie's auction house of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Collector is a regular patron, of course. After realizing that the Reality Stone could very well destroy the Nine Realms, the Asgardians gave the stone to the Collector, who was attempting to <laughs> collect all six of the stones. <laughs> For a good cause, I can't imagine so. I mean, look at this motherfucker. One down. Five to go. Jane Foster wasn't taking too well to the power of the ether. Once bound to her, it began warping her very reality. When Jane and the ether were brought to Asgard by Thor, Maleketh, age-old dark elf tyrant to the Asgardians, came through with his whole crew and just fucked up. After whipping a whole lot of ass, they get their hands on the reality stone. Awaiting the convergence of the Nine Realms, Maleketh was flanked by Thor's crack team of badasses. Thor told Meliketh to shit in a hat and punch it, ultimately and awesomely defeated him, restored the Nine Realms, and put the stone in a safety deposit box of the Collector's design, but not without losing Loki, his dear old brother in the process. Or did he? No, he didn't. Loki, that sassy, cheeky bitch, has made a deal with the devil, or rather Thanos, to gather the remaining stones. Together, they will use the stones to conquer the universe and the Nine Realms. Thanos likely promised Loki at some point off camera that Asgard would be unharmed, and Loki placed upon the Asgardian throne once it was all said and done. That's just speculation. I, you know, I haven't really seen that happen, but I'm pretty sure that's kind of what's going on. Because why the fuck else would he do something like that? You know? Just, yeah. With possession of the scepter which housed the Mind Stone, Loki was able to manipulate the minds of great scientists and warriors alike. If not for Tony Stark's arc reactor, he too would have fallen victim to Loki's cruel mind control. That is a, that's so cool. I need to get one of those arc reactors, man. I, Patreon? Patreon goal, perhaps? I don't know. The scepter was then captured by S.H.I.E.L.D., but not before falling into the hands of HYDRA after the massive insurgency that took place during Captain America the Winter Soldier. Loki is a key player when it comes to the location and the efforts to find the remaining Infinity Stones. We're gonna go way back to a simpler time, the days of Peggy Carter and Captain America, where the Tesseract was banished to Earth. <clears throat> Sorry. The Tesseract was banished to Earth at one point, possibly thousands of years ago, and then was discovered by the Red Skull. Hydra then harnessed its power somehow to create weaponry, and my theory later allowed for the arc reactors like Tony Stark's Iron Man suits. In a last ditch effort, Red Skull used the Tesseract to teleport into space. Where he is is currently unknown, but my guess is that we'll see him again alongside with Nebula, Thanos, Ronin, and a whole bunch of other bad mother 
here's an Infinity War. Watch. Well, mark my words, he's going to be back. Probably not as Hugo Weaving, but that mother will be back. We're gonna borrow the Space Stone from Red Skull for a little bit, I don't think he needs it, and teleport ourselves over to Xandar, home of the Nova Corps and foster home for the Power Stone. After a pretty badass dance-off with Ronan the Accuser, Peter Quill and the Guardians of the Galaxy capture the stone and give it to the Nova Corps. We got a glimpse of these Celestials using the Power Stone, as well as the most in-depth description of the Infinity Stones to date in this film. So that's the four stones that the Marvel films have shown us thus far. The Space Stone, the Power Stone, the Mind Stone, and the Reality Stone. But what about the stones we haven't seen? That leaves the Soul Stone and the Time Stone. I want you to understand that we're entering the realm of speculation here. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But my predictions have kind of come true thus far, such as f***ing Spider-Man joining the MCU told y'all that was gonna happen. I see I'm spitting all over myself. I'm so passionate about this shit. I, I, but I said, I put, I should have put money down on it because I would have made a lot of money. Don't gamble. Here's the Goldman Vision perspective. Doctor Strange in the Marvel 616 universe has a deep connection with the Soul Gem. During the Infinity Gauntlet storyline, Adam Warlock and Doctor Strange spend time within the Soul Gem to formulate plans to defeat Thanos. Later in the Marvel 616 universe, Doctor Strange, then a member of the Illuminati, was designated the protector of the Soul Gem. While this storyline is unlikely, even though my spidey sense is tingling on this one, oh, it's tingling hard. Oh, it's tingling hard. It is possible that the remnants of S.H.I.E.L.D. will go to Captain America and the New Avengers, whereas Tony Stark, being more associated with the American government, will form the Illuminati during the MCU Civil War storyline. Spider-Man will head the new Avengers, as Chris Evans and Steve Rogers, whom is nearing the end of his six-picture deal, will, spoiler alert, be killed off, only to return using the powers of the Time Stone for one last fight against Thanos. Do the math. Civil War makes five films for Chris Evans. Infinity War Part Two would be a sixth. Even though Captain America is a huge draw for the MCU, and a major part of what makes the Avengers stories work, I have a strong feeling that Peter Parker will take Captain America's place, while Falcon will take up the shield. When all hell breaks loose against Thanos, Doctor Strange and or Adam Warlock will use the Time Stone and or Soul Stone to resurrect Rogers, whose brilliant strategy will be used against Thanos. I mean, he is a captain after all, right? That leads us to the Time Stone. <laughs> you get it? Like, time, like, leads us to the... Never mind. I would be very surprised if they included another Time Gem, or rather, another Infinity Stone in uh, Age of Ultron. Like, very, very surprised. The title Age makes me believe that there might be time travel. However, I believe that that just refers to the age where regular catastrophic attack from a semi-alien force became a regular annual event. It's also the name of the Marvel 616 comic storyline that it's based on, which also features time travel. In this Marvel 616 timeline, however, it introduces a time machine built by Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four, of which Marvel Studios does not, I repeat, does not own the rights, and they're not getting it. Sorry, that one's not gonna happen. This does leave the door open for the Time Stone to replace Reed Richards' time machine for the MCU version, but I feel like they're saving time travel for a bit later. Again, you know, time, later, pun, no, nothing, okay. There is simply too much to introduce in Age of Ultron. This being a Whedon-produced film, I have no doubt in my mind that this film will reveal more of the inner workings of this seemingly godlike team and the relationships they share with one another. Ultron is really a MacGuffin, or a plot device that isn't necessarily the center of the story, but allows the other stories to occur. Such as the rift between Tony Stark and Steve Rogers. Ooh, I can't wait for that shit. Oh, I can't wait for that shit. Ooh, I can't wait for that shit. So to sum up, we have the Mind Stone, or the Scepter, which is owned by Baron Von Strucker for Hydra. We have the Reality Stone, or the Ether, which is owned by the Collector on Nowhere. We have the Space Stone, or the Tesseract, which is owned by Loki, or Thanos, depending on how you want to see it, on Asgard, or wherever the fuck Thanos is right now. The Power Stone, or the Orb, is owned by Novacor on Xandar. And for my speculations, 
The Soul Stone is probably going to appear in Doctor Strange or whatever movie that Adam Warlock appears in. So, possibly Guardians of the Galaxy 2. The Time Stone, I'm pretty sure, is not going to appear in Age of Ultron. But it might, so I kind of have to leave like that 10% window for that sort of thing to happen open. The Infinity War is a bit more likely. Uh, again, Adam Warlock might drop that Time Stone right into that. Bam! Time Stone. This ends our speculation for now, but there's a hell of a lot more to come, I can promise you that. Keep keep looking, keep keep watching, I'm, I'm checking it out right now. This edition of Goldman Vision is brought to you by Comic Movie Guru and Nerdfeed.com. Nerdfeed, the largest growing social nerdwork in the universe. Join today for free. Free, goddammit, free. Goldman Vision is brought to you by viewers like you. Subscribe to Patreon today to keep the lights on. We are the Soul Stone. Bum, 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 bum. Querido, ¿qué te pasa? Respondeme. No te alarmes. Es la droga. Mi invento. Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, and everything in between. My name is Nick, and this broadcast is brought to you in glorious Goldman Vision. 